Hundreds of thousands of Afghan migrants have been fleeing Pakistan as a country-wide crackdown against them has begun. The Pakistan government had ordered all undocumented migrants to leave by October 31st. While the government has stated these orders do not target any specific nationality, a large proportion of refugees in Pakistan are Afghans and it is clear that they will face the brunt of this action. Moreover, since the Taliban take over, at least 600,000 more Afghan refugees are estimated to have entered Pakistan. Now, with these expulsion orders ahead of winters, an estimated 1.7 million undocumented Afghan migrants are facing an uncertain fate with the rampant economic crisis under the Taliban regime and escalating hunger and poverty. Hila Najibullah, author and researcher and daughter of former Afghan president Mohammad Najibullah, spoke to People's Dispatch about this developing situation. I think the current refugee crisis that is, um, uh, you know, taking place across the border of Pakistan, Afghanistan, needs to be looked at um, within, um, you know, a global, a larger global migration context and politics, and then within the relationship of um, Afghanistan and Pakistan as as two uh, countries. And I must say that the current issue is extremely political, whether at the global uh, context we we analyze it or at the regional level between the two countries. I will start uh, at the global context. Um, You see the the, the notion of the fact that uh, migration is um, sort of try to um, to be uh, restricted in the European continent and mostly an agenda in in EU itself shows the fact that um, the the European Union or the countries and members of European Union are trying to come up with policies that could restrict the flow of refugees. We saw this, for example, in 2014-15, you know, uh, where um, uh, Germany had signed an agreement with the Afghan Republic in terms of repatriating Afghan refugees. Austria was one other country that did that. Um, And then countries like, um, you know, Denmark, Sweden, and then Norway that was not a part of the EU were also promoting for Afghans to go back and identify um, where are the safe zones. So for example, if Helmand was where the war was um, uh, during the war on terrorism, then let's specify areas in Kabul, where these people could be returned to Afghanistan. Post the fall of the Afghan government in August of 2021, when the flow um, uh, started um, again uh, out of Afghanistan, it had actually two to three main reasons. One was the fact that um, Afghans who worked uh, in the previous government, um, uh, their lives were uh, in threat and they had to come out for their own survival. And their ways of coming out, because we are a landlocked country, are, um, you know, Pakistan, Iran, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan. And each one of these countries had very restrictive uh, ways uh, for Afghans to uh, transit um, or to stay in order to find, um, you know, a settlement situation through units or or through embassies directly to go uh, to a third country. And then um, the second uh, group of refugees were basically Afghans who did not have means of income. And the economy situation is so bad in Afghanistan that a lot of people, as you know, uh, you know, are um, uh, under the poverty line. So for them, this is a way to earn money and send back. Um, And therefore you had the flow and the the border between Pakistan and Afghanistan is extremely porous. So that that was one of the other reasons why they would come, um, you know, to, um, to earn money. Um, And then the third uh, class is basically are the Afghan youth or the Afghan families who 
want their women or girls to be educated. They want uh, to have a future. And the current political scenario in Afghanistan doesn't allow them or give them a hope for a future that they could uh, perhaps, uh, you know, um, have. So these are the main reasons why Afghans leave, not only to Pakistan, but to Iran, Uzbekistan, or uh, Tajikistan or other countries. The means of, um, like, for example, when I left Afghanistan, it was by air to India. But right now you need visas to come to India. And that doesn't happen. You're not given visas. Or, for example, the... the um, uh, the Finnish government um, uh, had uh, uh, announced that Afghan women will be given um, asylum by um, by the Finland government uh, because of what uh, the atrocities they are going through under the Taliban regime. However, in order for them to seek asylum, they have to end up with a mahram either in Iran or Pakistan, and then get in touch with the Norwegian embassy to see whether their paperwork will be processed. So it's an extremely complex situation where um, Afghans not necessarily want to um, stay in Pakistan long term, um, but you know find a way to be res resettled or find a way of protection at least in the in the short term till they figure out what's the political situation of Afghanistan. And then there are th those who have come for just uh, economic reasons. Um, what is happening now um, in this global context, I think um, there was, if I may add, there was um, uh, a trilateral, uh, for example, agreement between UNHCR, Iran and Pakistan and Afghan government, how they would manage the situation of refugees. And what's really interesting um, to um, to understand is that what does this agreement entail? Because the money that is given to units here to manage uh, the Afghan migrants or Afghan refugees and asylum seekers in Iran and Pakistan, how long are they supposed to stay in these countries for resettlement? Are they supposed to be kept there? And uh, so, we don't have an um, a clear understanding of this kind of new agreements that have come up, which basically then play out at the local level, where, for example, Pakistan wants to play the economic card globally with its um, allies if they have some sort of um, spat, let's say, and they just wanted to say, OK, we have the control over the refugees and therefore we will show you unless you hear our demand either economically or politically. They do exactly the same thing with Afghanistan. So to just um, uh, give them an understanding that we're the big brother and you are pretty much um, inclined to listen to us and um, you know um, accept our demands politically or in terms of um, you know security uh, situation. And therefore, then uh, the card of refugees are played. And what is really sad to uh, to observe in this in this whole context is that the Afghan refugees in the past 40 years of the Afghan conflict have been a tool. First, in the Cold War, they were a tool to be used um, for the war against the, uh, the Soviet Union and the, um, the leftist government in Afghanistan. And now the refugees are used once again to put pressure um, economically or politically on the Afghan government and yet seek some sort of a bargaining um, card with uh, countries in the West or in the United States. I think it's a very dire situation. Um, for um, 1.2 million Afghans who are forcefully deported against the international refugee law of 1951 um, to Afghanistan. So um, the, the consequences are extremely um, difficult for those that are returned, also because the condition that the Pakistan government has put for refugees before return is that they cannot take 
above uh, assets of 50,000 uh, Pakistani rupees back to um, Afghanistan and all their cattle or, or whatever uh, that they have in terms of assets needs to be either sold out or even if they're sold out, then the, the money needs to be left because it cannot be above 50,000. So in a, in a country that the 98% of its people are kind of under um, a poverty line and then you have um, such um, limitations and such rules, um, you know, to forcefully return them back, you are actually, um, you know, uh, forcing them uh, to go through more poverty and hunger and um, harsher uh, humanitarian uh, crisis, because when they go back home, they don't have anything. So, um, uh, and I don't think that uh, the Taliban regime is capable of managing any of this situation because currently there is no system as such. Uh, there is no government as such. It's just uh, a militia group that is uh, in charge and uh, they might, uh, you know, um, have uh, certain, um, you know, procedures in place with the UNHCR or with the UN to, to bring these, these um, uh, people back. But I don't think financially or socially they're capable um, in terms of also infrastructure are capable of, of of, um, you know, uh, uh, meeting the needs of, of the uh, returnees um, that are forced back. So the, the situation is, uh, first of all, that they are um, pushed to hunger, uh, poverty. Um, they will have um, a no roof on top of their heads, no health care. A majority of the Afghan, um, you know, hospitals are, are, are um, having less number of doctors. And uh, because after the, the fall of the, the government, um, you know, they, they left the country. And this was one of the major crises in Herat earthquake, where you had lack of doctors. Um, so uh, we we're heading to Towards a situation that will be extremely precarious for the Afghans themselves um, and then for the international community who constantly says that um, they have a challenge um, raising funds for the humanitarian crisis in Afghanistan. Just briefly on the um, uh, the duration of ties between Pakistan and Afghanistan, I think more than anything else, what the Afghans um, are understanding, I mean, that the notion of, of strategic depth and the, the destructive politics between the two neighbors um, had the, the political elite always against the um, um, against the Pakistan policies and, and, and the government. However, now we realize that um, this um, feeling of um, uh, being insulted and being discriminated and being, um, uh, you know, pushed um, um, to, uh, to all the angles and isolated is also at people level where the uh, where the Pakistan government is now forcing Afghans uh, f you know to to leave or put economic pressure on them and this is something that I think um, the the people of Afghanistan are are feeling extremely um, you know sad about and 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 hurt uh, by because they um, always felt that um, you know uh, at least people to people relationship between Pakistan and Afghanistan was good even though politically there was always um, you know uh, conflicting interests so I see that the relationship not only at the political level uh, would be a challenge um, but also at the local level amongst the people of Afghanistan which I I think is far more important to consider than what, let's say, the the Taliban one versus, um, you know, the, uh, the Taliban one versus the the ex um, uh, member political members of of the republic uh, from Pakistan.